Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a classic and quick number theory problem for you. We want to find all positive integers m and n such that 9 to the power of m minus 8 to the power of n is equal to 1. Now, if we have a stare at this for just a second, we'll notice that if we let m and n both equal 1, then we've got 9 minus 8 on the left-hand side, and of course that equals 1. So certainly m and n being both equal to 1 is a solution, but we want to know are there any more out there? Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so there is a little bit of a strategy we can use in order to solve this problem, is if we notice that 9 is a square number. So that in fact means that 9 to the power of m will always be a square number as well, because we know 9 is just 3 squared, so we can write this as 3 squared raised to the m, but of course, this is the same as if I kind of just swap this m and this 2. So 3 to the m and then squared. So we've got a square number minus something equals 1. And notice that 1 is also a square number. So if you rearrange this, we can actually write this as the difference of two squares. So if you bring this 1 onto this side and the 8 to the n on the other side, we have 3 to the m squared minus 1 equals 8 to the m. But of course, this guy here, as I said, is the difference of two squares. So we can just write it as... 3 to the m plus 1 times 3 to the m minus 1, like so. So 8 to the power of n is equal to 3 to the m plus 1 times 3 to the m minus 1. Now remember, m and n are positive integers, so this here is simply a power of 8, and in fact, I can write this because we know 8 is just 2 cubed. This is 2 cubed raised to the n, or in other words, just 2 to the 3n, like so. So we've got a power of 2 equals something times something else. Now notice that 2 is indeed a prime number, so we essentially we've got a prime number raised to some number and it's equaling something times something else. But kind of by definition of a prime number, these guys here must be powers of that prime number. So in other words, this has to be 2 to the power of something and this also has to be 2 to the power of something. Because these guys are both in positive integers, so they're going to have some prime decomposition and of course because you know, if it had, say, a, if 7 divided this guy here, then that would mean 7 divides this guy here, which is obviously impossible. So these both have to be powers of 2. So this guy here is, say, 2 to the alpha for some positive integer alpha, and this guy here is 2 to the beta, okay? So 2 to the alpha and 2 to the beta. But then we notice that, just look at this thing here, 3 to the m plus 1 is precisely 2 more than that guy there. So we have that 2 to the alpha is equal to 2 to the beta, plus 2, like so. Well then if I just subtract 2 to the beta from both sides, I've got 2 to the alpha minus 2 to the beta is equal to 2. But then again, I can use a similar sort of argument. We know that alpha must be bigger than beta because 2 to the alpha is clearly bigger than 2 to the beta. So I can factor out a 2 to the beta from this equation here. So I get 2 to the beta, oopsie, multiplied by 2 to the alpha minus beta minus 1 is equal to 2. So I've got 2 to the beta times something equals 2. But notice that 2 is a very small positive integer, and it's also a prime number. So one of these guys must be 2, and one of them must be 1. So either we have that 2 to the beta is 1, but notice that that's impossible, because then we'd have that 3 to the m minus 1 is 1. So 3 to the m would be equal to 2, which is impossible, because 3 to the m is clearly a power of 3. So this guy here must be 2 which tells us that beta must be equal to 1, okay? So if we have beta equal to 1, we have 2 to the alpha minus 1, minus 1, must be equal to 1. This whole thing is equal to 1 because we know 2 to the beta is equal to 2. So we've got 2 times this guy in brackets here, which we know is 1, equals 2. So we have 2 to the alpha minus 1, minus 1, is equal to 1. So rearranging this, adding 1 to both sides, gives us that 2 to the alpha minus 1, is equal to 2, so that means that alpha minus 1 must be equal to 1, just by comparing ex comparing exponents, because of course 2 to the alpha minus 1 is equal to 2, which is just 2 to the 1. So alpha minus 1 is 1, so that means that alpha is equal to 2. So we have alpha equals 2 and beta equals 1, and that's the only possible solution we can have. But notice, if we just go back to where, when we introduced alpha and beta, if I get rid of this, that tells us that 3 to the m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the alpha, which is just 2 to the 2, which is 4. And then 2 to the beta, which is 3 to the m, 
minus one, this guy here is simply equal to two to the one, which is just two. So three to the m plus one is four, and three to the m minus one is two. It's very clear to see that this must mean that m is equal to one. So we have three plus one is four, and three minus one is two. No other possible m will work, and I, you know, hopefully it's quite clear that that's true. Okay, so we have m equaling to 1, and then we can just go ahead and plug that into our initial line we have up here. So we've got 3 squared, which is just 9, minus 8 to the n is equal to 1. So we get that 8 is equal to 8 to the n just by rearranging this, and that of course gives us that n equals 1. So there is indeed only one solution to this equation here, namely the trivial solution where m and m are both 1, and that was the one we kind of spotted in the introduction, and this proves it. So essentially what we've done is we said, if we have a solution to our problem, then it must be that m equals 1 and n equals 1, and then in theory we go back and check, but those were obvious solutions anyway. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you are new to number theory, these are kind of the pro these are sort of the problems you'll see. If you're perhaps a bit more familiar with number theory, this may have been a piece of cake for you. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.